a cause for national and family celebrations. What the hell's that like when you're on the balcony? The queen goes out the centre door, and then all the cousins go to the sides. So I'm meeting the cousins, who'll share with me what it means to be part of this extraordinary family. The queen mother has said that mummy is like a third daughter. Yeah. Revealing more about their most famous relation through private letters. With love from your godmother, Elizabeth. Personal photographs and rare memorabilia. So this is all the European families. Nadine is your mother? Yeah, of okay. course, yes. Sharing treasured memories for the very first time. <laughs> I always got a Christmas present. I got Twister. From the Queen? Yes. I'll be learning more about royal life in modern Britain. Um, I certainly was put in um, Queen as a potential partner for Prince Charles. And I get called Lady Mountbatten at work a lot. <laughs> On this road trip through the dynasties. How many would you estimate there to be? So many is not true. They bred like rabbits. And can I find a new cousin to take their place in the royal family tree? We have found some connections. Oh, wow. And we can confirm. <laughs> wow. Um, technically, no, Mrs. Romanoff um, would be my mother. What are you selling me? Oh, well, this is very exciting. I'm on my way to meet my first of the Queen's cousins, Princess Olga Romanoff. As you can see, I've travelled to inner Bulgaria. I'm not nonsense, we're in Kent. We're right in the middle of Kent, Kentish countryside. You can't really stop dust in a place like this. Even if I had a full staff, it would be pretty tricky. Oh, Olga lives at Provender House, which dates back to the 13th century. Often in the company of daughter Alexandra, affectionately known as Poggy. Why are you taking my tea towels and not their tea towels? You haven't washed them. I have. Where? What, these aren't washed. And grandson, Andrew. Mama, Dada. Andrew, can I have a biscuit? Andrew. Princess Olga Romanov. Her great uncle was Tsar Nicholas II, you know, the, the famous last Tsar of Russia, who is a first cousin of George V. They looked almost identical, I think. They had sort of big moustaches. So therefore, Olga is the Queen's third cousin. She's a princess. She's called Olga. The Queen used to take Charles and Anne to have tea with my grandmother, and they apparently had beautiful manners, and I had terrible manners. With no family riches to fall back on, this third house has to pay its way. So Olga and her daughter now run one wing as a holiday let. What are you doing? I'm just putting that underneath. No, because I need to hoover. Oh, so sorry, No, I have to lift up the rug. <laughs> That's why uh, I never help my daughter, because she won't let me in. Ever. And, and she says I'm she you know, bad, more issues. useless. So it's her baby, and I keep out the way. She does the washing. Which I always said I would never, ever do other people's dirty washing, ever. Luckily, now that this is up and running, this will, should bring in an income towards the 50-odd grand a year to keep the down, to keep the place. Mum, we got a crackle. Is the heating actually on? Yes. I can't... What, what, OK. I've turned the radiators down to two. I'm literally boiling. Olga is reputed to be a uh, force to be reckoned with, so uh, that's fun. I like forces to be reckoned with. I'm also hoping that she'll be something of a travelling companion for me. As I explore my way through the world of... Queen's Cousins. Provender House. There we are. Look at this amazing sign. Did he say what time service is on? Hello. Hello. Welcome to Provender. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm Alexander. I'm Olga. Hi. And I call you Olga. Please do, yes. And who's this? Yes, this is Andrew, aged 20 months. Mm. The youngest grandchild. Hello, Andrew. Look very impressed, does he? Doesn't Not like yet. the rain. No, no. <laughs> Do come in. Lovely, thank you. Watch the slipperiness. Amazing house. It has its moments. I bet it has. Watch your hand. Be careful because it, it, it eats hands. Extraordinary door. It is extraordinary. Look at that. Right, Fast. so I'm going to light the fire first of all because we're going to eat lunch in here and it's really cold, so the fire has to be done first. The portraits in here. Yeah. The woman is my mother in the days. 
there was a man to put logs on the fire before the wood burner. These ugly people are no relation. Granny bought them for wall space because they really are particularly hideous. It would be <laughs> awful to find out, actually, that they were related, but I they was might. always told they weren't. They seem to have had their, their foreheads shaved or something. Something monstrous most, going on. Look at her, very magisterial. Poor woman. Yeah. <laughs> Underneath, there's a photograph yeah. of the king and queen of Denmark, who are my great-great-grandparents. He was known as the father-in-law of Europe because all his daughters married crown heads. One was the Empress of Russia, one was the Queen of England, and his son became the King of Greece. Now, they're also the great-great-grandparents of Prince Philip, the Queen, Constantine of Greece. Into That's the why there's all that interbreeding yeah. in the ranks of the royal houses, because you had to stick with your own yeah. thing. Yeah. Olga is an international cousin to the world. Olga's grandmother, Kazania Romanov, was first cousin of the Queen's grandfather, George V. I live in the attic, which was two servants' rooms knocked into one. Yeah. Watch yes. the step, please. Oh, yes. In 1918, Olga's great-uncle, Nicholas II, his wife and their five children, were all murdered by communist revolutionaries. This massacre of the Russian royal family sent shockwaves around the world. George V sent a ship to the Crimea to rescue his surviving relations. Olga's grandmother and her family were among the lucky few who made it to Britain. These trunks, this one was Kazania's, Grand yeah. Duchess Kazania, my grandmother. This was Maria Dagmar's, my great-grandmother's. They came out on HMS Marlborough when they were um, rescued. So and these were know, packed in They were packed by haste. servants. Oh, they also right. left the pack, other packing cases and things on the beach because my great-grandmother, as she was standing in the bows of the ship, mm. um, said, what are those? And the servants had been frightened that they left all the, the silver and stuff on the beach. It's a bit like sort of getting furniture out of a burning house. That's it, it's yes, but what you rescue first. Yeah. Yeah. This is the library that has to be the coldest room in the house in winter. It's just unbelievable. Now, there's mm. a photograph of Queen Mary that signs herself Aunt May. She had kind of upmarket kleptomania because she'd go stay in somebody's house. She'd be sitting on one of a dozen Sheraton chairs and she'd say, oh, I do like this chair, and you'd be obliged to give you her all to 12. Give it. All uh, 12? Well, you had to give her the whole lot, not just Can't one just chair. Have one. No, you had to give her the lot. So people got wise to this and they'd say, oh, God, Queen Mary's coming to stay. So they'd put the good stuff in the attic and bring them the more rotten stuff down. But no, she was famous for it. Absolutely famous. That's just and, hilarious. You know, though. outside church. So everybody... said, I do like that fur coat, and you'd mm. have to give it to her. Thank mm. God our royal family don't do that. But be very careful of your head, because my poor father yes. lived here for 45 years and was always hitting his head. <laughs> you just thought he might have learned. You would have thought, but you know, people don't learn. Salad looks really nice. <laughs> Two tosses. <laughs> Sorry, oh, it's look. taken a while. I didn't put dressing on because I wasn't sure whether you, you would oh, like no. dressing or not. I love some dressing. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Cheers. Well, good what help. How very lovely to meet you. Well, it's Thank good you to so meet much. you. That's grand. No. I'm married a commoner. Right. I see. That noise, by the way, is the dog. It's not, it's not me. I know, I'm so That's sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what about your wider family? Because obviously you're, you're a third cousin of the Queen. After the revolution, when my yes. grandmother came over, she was first cousin of George V, right. of the Queen at the time, which was the Queen Mother. And I believe that kind of pissed off the Queen Mother. And so his invitations to the palace and all that were kind of... Dried up. Yeah. The nice. protocols were so The protocol was strict. quite strict, yeah. A lot of that is basically a pile of poo. Yeah, uh, and yeah. They thought of it as being a huge thing then, but um, it really, really is um, rubbish. I do feel robbed. In a way, your family and its legacy, everything's been taken away by history. Or do you feel that actually you've been blessed by not having to carry that sort of yoke around you? Definitely blessed. Yeah. I, would, I would have made a lousy imperial um, princess. Well, you've been a know. fantastic one. I think you'd have been great. What do you think? I scrub up well, but, I mean, you don't want to scrub up every day. You want to be smelling of horse, and you don't want to have to be... Um, I know I do. ...tarted up. <laughs> yeah. No scrubbing up needed for our royal road trip around the Queen's family tree. Wow. Now then, oh. And, uh, yes, you can regale me with stories as we go. Oh. <sighs> Chance of a big support. Oh, what a good point. Or, uh, perhaps yeah.
Yes, it's these relationship tables. So this is all the European families, and I think uh, 175, did I, is where you appear. Nadine is your mother? Yeah. That's, right, oh, okay. gosh, yes. So that's my father's writing. Huh. He allocated numbers, I believe, to everybody. So th that's the succinct answer, exactly what I was asking you in the car. Absolutely, isn't it? So yes, basically, all you actually just throw me that volume, and I just... Yeah. Well, that is, is obviously is. homework for tonight. Get into bed. Yeah, yeah good. No, I'll, do, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. So we are second cousins. I think we're Third. second cousins once removed. Right. And my great grandfather was a Grand Duke Michael of Russia. Yes. Who would have been your grandfather's, grandfather's brother? Brother. Oh, okay. Right. Sandro's brother. Sandro. Okay. Was right. my grandfather. There is a picture of him up there, actually, at the top. When he was very young, then. Yes. How oh, interesting. I've never seen a young photograph of Sandro. <laughs> It's time for Olga to lead me to it. James and Ivor give me a quick tour. So that, that's my father. As first cousin and close friend of Prince Philip, Ivor's father was best man at the Queen's wedding. The bridegroom, Duke of Edinburgh, was ready to make an early start. As it happened, it was a little too early. So with his best man, the Marquis of Milford Haven, returned indoors until the appointed hour. And he was best man. Right. Yeah, and, uh, and he's just about the most dashing person. And here's a was. picture of him there. There he is. Right? Yeah. And you know the story of her bouquet? Yes, I do. It Not, disappeared. Dis no, never found. Nobody ever yeah. knew what happened to it. Yeah. <gasps> Actually, it's interesting. I mean, you never really noticed that. Yeah. But normally, no, a bride would I think, always be holding it. I think they recalled everyone. Okay. They did. did I do more they? photographs off. I think the florist was dispatched. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't it's know. extraordinary. I should imagine the name Mountbatten carries more weight, actually, than any title. It's better known than, actually, even than Windsor. Well, like, it, it does, and uh, as example of, of, of my brother, who's the Marquis of Milford Haven. Yeah, but, um, no one gives uh, the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carry on, carry on. <laughs> ah. But, James, this is the big question. So what's, what title do you get? I don't. Well, I mean, this is, a, this is an issue. I mean, if you wanted to stamp your feet, you presumably could. Well, I mean, I get called Lady Mountbatten at work a lot, and I get curtsies and all sorts. <laughs> And it's just sometimes you're in the mood for it, sometimes you know, you and sometimes, sometimes you're having a rotten morning, and yeah. some, <laughs> somebody flies out the door and dips into a curtsy, and you just want to be right. <laughs> Up until the late 90s, Ivor had a full time staff, but these days, Queen's cousins have got to get their hands dirty. We've got some jobs to do. Good, tell, tell me, me you're going to follow us in the buggy. <laughs> Ivor and James run a wedding business, a cafe, and do most of the maintenance work themselves. Is that de deer poo? Yes, that is deer that poo. That is deer poo. Yeah. So these are all to come out. Yeah. But well, they're they're tricky, though. They are. I see what you mean. And mind your back and your knees. I've pulled my knees. Good smell, isn't that? We've got another pair of waders. I should go <sighs> get those. Do you think? Oh, Lord. Oh, oh, no, hang on. Oh. This, presumably, is exactly what you imagined life as a member of the, of the extended royal family would, Absolutely. would entail. Yeah, no surprises here at all. Yeah, literally Going knee up, deep in shit. Knee deep in shit, stench. I thought there'd be a lot of people around to do this sort of thing. Flunkies are there, none. Oh. Very thin on the ground. This. <laughs> Welcome to my world, Zander. Come on. It's done nothing. No, no it's done nothing. You're completely right. <laughs> Total waste of time. Yeah. <laughs> it turns your way. <laughs> now try and move. I have a bath. It's nap time. It's nap time? Yeah. And then we re reconvene for drinks. Yep. Love. After a quick refresh, it's time to get ready for dinner. But this isn't quite your average Saturday tea time. There's a chef in the kitchen preparing our supper. And I've been told the dress code is a smoking jacket and no tie. So I've brought my best with me. Cheers, guys. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. I have spotted, there's a photograph over there of the palace. You're so good at being hospitable and lovely that I, for a moment, forget that I'm in the company of royalty. Oh, rubbish. And then I'd spy a little photograph like that. You go, oh, Lord, yes, I remember now. <laughs> I remember why I'm here. <laughs>
What the hell's that like when you're on the balcony there? I mean, that's quite a thing. Well, that was me in 1967. So the invitation came, saying, please, yes. will you come for... It was always by uh, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, because as a senior um, lady, yeah. she was in charge of the Queen's birthday parade. Which is true. So she's in charge. And, of course, you know, the family's really got very large, so we don't go anymore. Are you told where you're going to stand? No, no, no. But, I mean, you know, the Queen goes out the same door mm. with the immediate family, and then all the cousins and the more distant cousins would all go to the sides, and it was just a matter of course. So there's not like the little sort of footmarks saying... You no, 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 not at all. Yeah, right, I see. But, of course, you know, uh, the, the children um, would all just scamper out, and you'd yeah. always have the, the, the fly past. All the kids wanted to look at that and get in the best positions. So yeah. they were sort of barging through to the front. Yeah. That's, you know, that was the best kids, isn't it? James, what, what's it like for you joining this wider royal family and then joining Ivor's family? Obviously, uh, I'm not a dad, but now I'm a stepfather. Having them in, in my life has just been amazing. James never really wanted to get married. And yeah. I pushed him only because I wanted to validate him and give him a position. Because it couldn't have been easy mm. being Ivor Mountbatten's boyfriend. So you think that that means that you're on equal terms, yeah. doesn't it? And also, this is, a, this is a bold and brave new step for the extended royal family. I mean, you're the, you're the first same-sex marriage in the royal yeah. family, I think, aren't you? In any, yes. in any, any, any royal, royal family, dynasty. Really? Absolutely. Really? I've made history. That's brilliant. <laughs> You've made history. <laughs> How on earth? Here we go. Send you. Alexander, how are you over there? Am I being interviewed? <laughs> Although no official statement was made on this historic moment, Ivor and James's nuptials had the full blessing of the whole royal family. So this is a cauliflower soup served with parmesan beignet, roasted scallop, lemon thyme oil. Wow. Mm. That sounds fab. Wow. Oh, absolutely. Delicious. When you are together as a family and when you've come in from the balcony, mm -hmm. is it like a normal family? Yes, is it all absolutely. Complete? And that's what everybody yeah. seems to forget. We all have our ups and downs. Of course. Everybody has course. their own internal arguments. And it's the same anywhere. But the formality is dropped. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. But, of course, you, must, you always... Thank you. you will always remember that the Queen is the Queen. The Queen is the Queen. Uh, what's the protocol with the Queen? What do you call the Queen? Ma'am. Ma'am. You would say Your Majesty to begin with, um, and then always ma'am. That's just normal. Yeah. It's like when we went to yeah. school, we would always call the headmaster sir. Sir, of course. Absolutely. You wouldn't no. think anything of it. It was just sir. Yeah. <laughs> you go up to Balmoral. You go to... Uh, once, uh, you know, uh, Prince Edward is a... Is a, is a uh, we were all at school together at Gordonston. Gordonstown is the royal choice, the school in northeastern Scotland to which the Duke of Edinburgh went himself. Prince Charles is said to have enjoyed as good a wish. And actually, I have to say, I loved it. Did you? Oh, I was really great question. Yeah, oh, good. No, it was really good. good fun. But, you know, schooling has so changed over the years. Mm. I wouldn't send my children to the north of Scotland. But when we were young, parents didn't really have an awful lot to do with their children. You know, and I think it was a fabulous school because it taught us a lot of independence. We all learned to sail. We'd go off all around the north coast of Scotland, learning to you know, get on in close confinement. Uh, I loved it. Yeah. Really loved it. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed this somewhat unique evening, but I'm itching to get back on the road with Olga, as I'm hoping she might spill the beans about her history with Prince Charles. God, I was so virginal. <laughs> I'm on a road trip, hoping to get to know Her Majesty a tiny bit better through the eyes of her family. So far, I've met a cousin on the Queen's father's side of the royal family tree. My language gets worse and worse as we move. And of course, an international cousin, my travelling companion, Russian Princess Olga Romanov. Oh, fuck! Now what am I going to do? <laughs> And is there still a fairy story thing that attaches to royalty, do you think? Well, yes and no. Um, it all depends how many times they um, tell you about their um, problems on television, which I, yes. I'm afraid I'm not very keen on. Yes, your view on the, on the Sussexes, for example. Not, not great. I mean, the Queen's never sat there and said about anything that makes her... 
has she? She's yes. always got on with it. She gets on. The most she ever did was that Anna's horrible. What was it? She said Anna, yes. yes. Which I thought was wonderful. I think a bit of mystique and, and all that is, is a very good thing. Now we're driving round and round the green. Yeah, that's very good. Shit, fuck. Okay, sorry. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Dear, dear, dear. No, it's alright. Lovely Just time for one last cuppa with Olga before I leave her to meet my next Queen's cousin. Beautifully driven, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Weren't you being lined up as potential partner for Prince Charles? Um, I certainly was put in um, Queen as a potential partner for Prince Charles. They did articles on the five foreign princesses that possibly could marry. OK, when they were making, putting that list together, what do you think the things they were looking for? A title, foreign, um, breeding, yeah. and um, possibly because I was 17 and they were all quite young, a virginity. Yeah, go on, let's give her the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I was definitely, yeah, she I, goes. God, I was so virginal. Uh, so that was, that, that sort of ticked the boxes. Yeah. You don't suppose someone in the palace reads these articles and puts them in an envelope and puts them under Prince Charles's door? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I'm in Norfolk to meet a cousin on the Queen Mother's side of the family, a Bose lion. Around the corner there are some nuts, all in pots. Who also happens to be the closest of the Queen's cousins I'll be meeting. Anything else for you? Oh, that's everything. Thank you. Victoria Pryor is the great niece of the Queen Mother. Her mother, Margaret Rhodes, was the Queen's first cousin and closest companion. Which makes Victoria the Queen's first cousin once removed. She's also the Queen's goddaughter. I don't suppose anyone here in Cry knows that the person who's serving them their delicious, fresh baked cakes over the counter is the Queen's goddaughter and indeed first cousin. But uh, that's, I imagine that's probably how Victoria likes it to be. I got an um, Eccles cake, please. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I think what would be interesting when meeting Victoria is she's a Bose lion, so therefore she comes from the family side of the Queen. She's not from the formal side, the royal side. And I think that's going to be fascinating. Victoria. Ah, oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Nice How to lovely. Meet you. Do, I know, it's amazing, it's isn't it? Come wow, in. Come how in. exciting. Thank you. Oh, so this look is at this. Fair. This is heaven. Great hunks of cake. You've got to have hunks of cake. Has the Queen been here? I have to ask. No. She did say she must come, but it's too difficult. You'd have to close all the roads and you'd have to yeah. do this. And, yeah. you know. Sophie Wessex has been few, quite a few times. Yeah. Nobody notices her. She just, just comes in looking down. like yeah. she's just one of the yummy mummies. I suppose a lot of people would imagine that if you're, if you're a cousin of the Queen's, you therefore wear a tiara all the time and of forever you know, followed by footmen and, <laughs> yeah. and travel anywhere in a, in a coach. Um, but, in fact, you're working six days a week <laughs> supplying food to the, the people of Clyde. I mean, that's... Yeah. We're all just perfectly ordinary people. The Queen Mother and my granny were very close, and the Queen Mother was unbelievably fond of Mummy and yes. her siblings. So she spent so much of her childhood playing with the princesses. And they were almost like sisters, really. I mean, Mummy really really loved the Queen Mother. Yeah. And the Queen Mother has, in the past, sort of said, you know, that Mummy was like a third daughter. Yeah. Victoria's mother, Margaret, was the Queen's best friend and closest companion. From childhood holidays right up to Margaret being the Queen's bridesmaid, the two women shared their whole lives together. Sandringham isn't that far away from here, is it? Mummy never stayed with us. She always stayed at Sandrium. Really? <laughs> it's so much more comfortable, yeah. darling. <laughs> what I think so fascinating is that being a Bose lion, you're very, very, very close to the royal family and completely normal. Yeah. <laughs> you're, God you're the, you know, your relationship with them is just like any family relationship. Yeah. They just it's happen. Really well. Occasionally, to have to run off out through that door and wave from a balcony, yeah. and then back they come in. You look at a picture like this, which I have to say is one of my favourite pictures of the Queen with your mother. It kind of sums it all up. I know. Just That's the total normality. Total normality, and look how happy she is. Well, they're both in Scotland. Yeah. That makes them both happy to yeah. begin with. Yeah. 
and they are showing off their shoes <laughs> that they had made in the 40s <gasps> together. They're identical shoes. Just delightful. Because you all, your eye almost passes over, and then you go, Whoa! that's cool. It's I queen. know, it just looks like two yeah. slightly elderly ladies in their kilts. Yes. I mean, the Queen would have loved just to have been a country yeah. lady yeah. with her animals. It's amusing the way she enjoys this, isn't it? Thank you. You know her, though. Yes. From a very tender side to her, that obviously yeah. is not the public side. No. I mean, for example, what do you call her? Oh, ma'am. Ma'am. Yes. What? Mummy called her Lilibet, but we call her ma'am. Ma'am. If she's staying, then first thing in the morning you curtsy, and then you don't have to curtsy after that. Really? See. Goodness. Etiquette. That is the etiquette. <laughs> Look. And that's that. just both of them looking heavenly. Heaven. That's just lovely. It is really isn't nice, it? isn't it? Heaven. Putting the world to rights. Yeah. Oh. I mean, she's incredible the way she looks after everybody. You know, I mean, she looked after Mummy. You know, she was so good. At the end of 1980, when my father hadn't been terribly well, mm. the Queen asked her if she wouldn't mind living in suburbia. And Mummy was like, yeah. And she said, well, there's a house in the Great Park, if you'd like it, which was a godsend. Yeah. And, you know, Mummy was back in the bosom of her family. Yeah. That's Mummy and the Queen Mother. I'm not sure where that is, actually. She would come and have a swift Probably. alcoholic. Dubonnie and Ed. And it. It's lovely. <laughs> this is our wedding. And all up there, that's the Dunbar family. Retired engineer Cathy Cormack lives in Tadworth in Surrey. We just grew up with this family history all around us. We all knew we'd been descended from King Ethelred. <laughs> it, was, it was well known in the family. Which would make her an extremely distant cousin of our Queen. I guess everybody wants to be related to royalty, and so is it true or isn't it true? And how can I prove it one way or the other? It's sort of sorted out. Great grandmother. Cathy's grandfather James believed his grandmother Jemima was the illegitimate child of Elizabeth Nicholl and one Sir George Dunbar, a Scottish nobleman and rumoured descendant of King Ethelred. I think my grandfather would be very proud that I've continued on his lines with family research because I, it meant so much to him but I think he'd be glad that at least one of his grandchildren was carrying on. We've arranged for Cathy to come and meet us. All she knows is that we've passed her family tree on to Ancestry to see what they can uncover. To have the family tree confirmed as being correct would be absolutely incredible. But whichever way it goes, I think it's still a wonderful story. All these things here. Aha! Kathy. Yes. Hello, how do you do? I'm fine, thank you. Hi. Very nice to meet you. I'm Alexander. Nice to meet you. Okay, do you want to come over here? Yes. Come and stand and take your station. Yes. Now, we are coming to the end of a journey that I think you've, you've been on all your life. <laughs> More or less, yes. So when did you first become aware of this story? I don't remember being first told about it. I suppose I was about five or six, you know, so I've just grown up with the idea. My grandfather used to live with us and he always talked about it. Well, Laura's been working on, on w what information she's had from you. And we are going to hear... I'm so excited. <laughs> We're going to hear what you found. OK, well, Cathy, you found a baptism transcript, didn't you, for Jemima Dunbar? Yes. Showing that she was the daughter of George Dunbar? Yes. The issue was that you weren't sure if that was the Sir George Dunbar. No, that's, that, that was really the issue. You know, that was so the first issue. <laughs> So we began by looking into parish records, and we can confirm that, in fact, Jemima was the daughter of Sir George Dunbar. Wow. Wow, I've got a little <laughs> goosebump wow. moment going on there. That is the first <laughs> discovery. That's huge. It is. <laughs> well, that brings us to our next point. Yeah. So you believed that you were descended via Sir George Dunbar from King, King Ethelred. Yeah, yeah. And that King Ethelred was your closest royal ancestor connecting you to the Queen. Well, we have found some connections. Oh, wow. And you are also connected to the Queen via... Yeah. You are, in fact, a direct descendant of King James V of Scotland, 
was oh, no. the father of oh, Mary, Mary, Queen Queen of Scots. Scots. <laughs> I haven't found that one. <laughs> wow. That's extraordinary. <laughs> and we have a tree here that shows that through James V of Scotland, you are also descended Prince of Henry VIII. Yeah. So you are a Tudor, a Plantagenet <laughs> of York. <laughs> other people's dirty washing ever. Luckily, now that this is up and running, this will should bring in an income towards the 50 odd grand a year to keep the down, to keep the place. Mum, we gotta crackle. Is the heating actually on? Yes. I can't what, what, okay. I've turned the radiators down to two. I'm literally boiling. Olga is reputed to be a uh, force to be reckoned with. So uh, that's fun. I like forces to be reckoned with. I'm also hoping that she'll be something of a travelling companion for me as I explore my way through the world of the Queen's Cousins. Provender House, there we are. Look at this amazing...